the unrealistic male body standards. I have never watched a video from this creator before. It's my first time. I have no idea what to expect, but uh, yeah, you guys requested I watch this. So let's do it. If you search Google for the perfect male physique, something interesting shows up. Wait, the wait, same... wait, wait, wait. There's something wrong there. I there, there, there were no anime pictures. Damn, my, my Google is really targeting me. <laughs> We have very different standards! In for men's health. <laughs> this wasn't always the case. Now, let me close those tabs okay. before I start getting strange looks again. But many are calling this phenomenon one of the biggest threats to the fitness industry. And this isn't coming from people that just want an excuse to be lazy. Unhealthy relationship with food. I don't court a banana. I don't! Nor is it coming from the give yourself a hug type people. I don't court a banana. Who Who would even think of that? Banana's just a banana. It's a healthy food. But what? Yeah, there, there, cookie monster. In fact, the people speaking out are heavily incentivized to shut up and smile. And most do. But the more you listen, the more you realize a harsh truth. For an increasing number of men and boys, this otherwise benign desire to be more attractive transforms into something categorically disordered. This is a systemic problem, too taboo for television, that the human brain isn't built to recognize, often until it's too late. No, there's no short secret recipe for it. You know, you just have to. Yeah. Don't do this at home. I don't ever want to be in that good of shape again. <laughs> it's not, it's not natural. There's not many drug use or abuse issues where you get complimented so much. They see it on the small screen Jesus. on their phone. They see it on the big screen in Hollywood movies. It's in their hands when they're a f***ing toddler. So yeah, I decided to start, start trying. Don't compare yourself to these people because they're probably lying to you anyway. You need to pull your head out your ass and understand. It takes its toll. It's not right, is it? I know it's not right, but I can't say for sure that this is going to stop. So, how did body okay. dysmorphia become so widespread and deadly? But more important, it's like the male equivalent of women being subjected to the unrealistic standards of like Victoria's Secret models and stuff like that, and feeling like they needed to be like that, but the men variant of it. It's weird because like the part where they're saying that you have it as a as a toy in your hand, right? It's like, yeah, so like so does everyone. You see pretty you see pretty girls like Barbie dolls and stuff, and you see muscly men. It's like this has been a thing for a very, very long time where everything like I don't know necessarily if it's bad per se or unhealthy, because Having an ideal to look up to or having uh, what you consider the beauty standard, right? It's something that's being shaped and molded into your subconscious as you grow up. Like different people will see different things and grow up to just like that, to be attracted to that. And I understand like as guys, right, if you don't fit a mold that has been trained into you, you're going to think that you're worth less, maybe? Like it's... It, I don't know how to put it in uh, in a way that's like not gonna offend people, but like it's a self-made problem that we all go through. I'd say the unrealistic standard, right, of perfection or beauty, what we view as I don't know. Back then, we had the the gods, right, the Greece gods, especially if you look at them, and you only saw like all the super toned bodies and sh well shaped stuff. <laughs> Just be more resistant to brainwashing. Nice. Nice hat I mean, honestly, it, it's a thing where, like, I am fully aware that a lot of my preferences when it comes to aesthetic, to how things look, is also stemming from what I grew up with and what I've seen. But at the same time, it makes me wonder how exactly you're going to get to the point where it is a standard and a problem because i don't know when i look at someone that's beautiful i look at man i would like to be that much like i would like to go towards that path to strive towards it 
it works not giving fucks. It definitely works. Yeah, it, it definitely works. Like, I can tell you for sure, because I'm the same, right? I like my body. I love my body. I like how I look. I don't particularly give a fuck what people think. The only thing I care is, like, my own ideal version of what I look like. Because at the end of the day, right, I, I wouldn't want to, I don't know, see something I don't find pretty <laughs> in the mirror. I, I don't know how to put it in a nice way, but yeah. We do it to ourselves a lot of the time, but yeah, they blamed men for the unrealistic female image. Really? Interesting. What the heck? It, it baffles me, like, why why are men being blamed for, for the female image? <laughs> it's like, it's a vicious cycle. That That's the part about it. Because it's like, imagine men going around now and saying like, well, women don't want us unless we're properly fit and uh, look and be like bodybuilders. I, I don't know, or like how actors were in a particular movie where they had to train specifically for that. But I'm like, man, those people, if they expect that from me, I'd just call them crazy. I'd be like, well, tough. <laughs> Good luck finding that, moving on. But blaming someone for that, it's, it's literally a vicious cycle. It's just, you see that, you think it's pretty, and expecting it is, that's the wrong part. Like, why would you ever expect that? Anyway, let, let's watch the video. Let's let's see what they're gonna say. Importantly, why are more people not speaking about this? Because it's been going on for so long. Sensitive topics, viewer discretion. Mm -hmm. What is the perfect male physique? For me growing up, it was something like this. Health magazines suggest the same. Over time, this ideal has morphed towards something leaner and more muscular. Really? Trust me. Hollywood films make this clear. <laughs> Similarly, with reality but TV shows. But that's unhealthy. Female like, dolls are criticized for I becoming unrealistic. I don't think people want that. But male dolls are arguably even worse. 1960s G.I. Joe looks like he's about to unveil the iPhone. 30 years later, he looks more like a bodybuilder. What the fuck? Early Luke Skywalker, besides modern Skywalker. Batman, besides modern Batman, you get the point. If we ask AI to show us the ideal male physique, a similar image is painted. There's a clear ideal becoming more and more extreme. That's not like, I would say that this is biased or rather that it's being, that you're being led into uh, this answer because the way you word it, especially towards an AI, the way you say it, it will result in different things. But it's also the fact that like, it's being fed images from the internet. And what, who are the most people that are going to post images of themselves? Bodybuilders that are training for contests. Bodybuilders that are in their peak prime fucking build with no fat, super lean, and everything. Like, honestly, it's one of those things where like, what is it going to be trained on? On what's the most available on the internet. People are not going to post pictures of themselves looking quote unquote disgusting. No one, no one wants to do that unless they're on a journey of like trying to get better, in which case they're going to post a really like their starting point and then like progress pictures. But like that's not going to be what you find mostly on the internet. And then like bodybuilding is niche. I don't think most people want that or say that this is what they're looking for. I know a lot of women that are into muscles. I, I'm personally not like I don't like bodybuilding bodies. To me, it's too extreme. It's not my thing. But like I know a lot of women that are into like muscly dudes and they're like, oh, my God, I just touched the guy's like abs and they were like hard rock and so nice. And I talk to them and they're like, no, I wouldn't want something too extreme either. So what are we seeing here? These are the men of the Woodaby tribe, showing their slender bodies, white teeth and eyes in a beauty pageant to win the attention of the female judges. This is what the peak male looks like in the Bodai tribe, where the men compete to be the fattest. Ancient interesting. Ancient statues depict a lean That's interesting, I didn't know that. While traditional Japanese culture... Yeah, see, this is what I mean. Like, you see the Greece gods and kind of that's... I don't know, that's something that's been an ideal and a standard for a very long time for people that know about Greeks. Because it's not something really portrayed. Women just want Brad Pitt and I just have to fall. 
some, yeah. Or, or the very feminized variant. That's another thing. Like, I don't think like that part is being portrayed very often. There's been a, an insane rise in, in femboys. An insane rise. And I don't think people really think about that too much. Associates masculinity with self-discipline, loyalty and honor. To identify the physical ideal. Uh, <laughs> I like how he mentioned something that has nothing to do with the body there. We need to understand what beauty is. The Oxford Dictionary defines it as the quality of being pleasing to the senses or to the mind. And looking across different cultures, the ideal mm -hmm. seems to vary and change over time. Social media and the internet have erased cultural boundaries and created a highly competitive environment where only the most extreme stand out. This em this is the problem with social media. It's not necessarily having to do with... I mean, it has to do with body standards because a lot of the times, like a lot of the kids nowadays are getting trained into that by the simple fact that they spend so much time that this is what they think is the norm and normal, right? Like a lot of people that are on the internet that are very young are going to be susceptible to this. But that simply means that this is bad parenting if you're going to let your kid just exist online chronically and believe all of that. At least in my eyes. Emphasis on leanness and muscularity isn't just a Western thing, it's gone global. We are witnessing the homogenization of the ideal male physique, what some refer to as hypermasculinity. Even society's ideal men seem to be getting stuff done to achieve this. There has been a lot of talk about, you know, red pill and self improvement, creating your hypermasculine character. Looking like you swallowed a shovel is probably not the answer. The psychology that somehow would have led to this guy thinking Damn. he needs a jaw implant or something, I can't even fathom. A self-improvement can absolutely what? go too far. We aren't just talking Greek statue physiques. Are you that was passed real? long ago. From facial aesthetics to height and muscle definition, some of the methods men are using to achieve such ideals you might find disturbing. That smile you see is from a man who just had his bone shattered in a surgery to add two inches to his height. A painful procedure that more and more men are getting. Although Makesh recorded the physical pain at a 9 out of 10, he stated it was less than the emotional pain he felt when people mocked him for his height. We'll get rid of those love handles to us. Other men are getting abdominal implants, with Jesus some injecting Christ. oil into their muscles. Each year, over 2 million Americans have cosmetic surgery, a number that's rising, with many trying to achieve an instant boost in muscularity total spent on my this is fucked up this is really fucked up over the fact like that people would go to these lengths in general and it's not like it happens a lot like i know it happens because plastic surgery right is very rampant as well and people try to get to their ideal self but i knew it was bad with all of that and implants and everything but people actually getting procedures to to get taller like that is what the fuck it honestly baffles me that we reach the point where people really believe that if you're not six foot or higher you don't have a chance in life it baffles me because like <laughs> If you live in such a place and you have the ability to leave, fucking leave, man. This is like, just move. This is insanity. My body modifications is 950,000 US dollars. Now, people can do as they please, but for many, one cycle of surgery is never enough. Um, oh, oh my God. Please tell me that this is, this is filtered and modified. I, I paused on this because I wanted to talk, but I, I'm seeing this and I'm like, Please tell me that this is with a filter on, because, uh, yeah. Bigorexia is a dysmorphia people have, where they never see themselves as muscular. Oh. I'm very curious as to why my waist is thicker than usual. Upper chest needs work. Why is my waist so thick? My arms just aren't big enough in comparison to my, to my chest and my back. Of course, this can lead them down a path of steroid abuse. When I was 15, I... What did something fuck, crazy man? that changed my life forever. And with the rise of steroid-like compounds readily available to buy on the internet, many teenagers are shutting down their hormones for a more muscular physique. Do I take any supplements as a 15-year-old bodybuilder? Yes, let me show you what to take. 
Uh, I'm currently on 15 milligrams a day of RAG140, so oh 25 God. milligrams a day of MK67. I'm literally listening to this and just being with my jaw open and being like, this is a nightmare, quite literally. Like, this is painful to watch because people doing this to themselves on purpose because they think this is going to solve anything. Like, I don't know how to say it in a way that that's not perceived as mean, but like, bruh, if someone doesn't like you for who you are and how you are, don't change for them. That's the biggest mistake you can make. Don't do things thinking that's gonna up your odds with someone that's that shallow. Like, if someone doesn't d denies you because you're not tall enough for them, they're not worth you going and getting yourself through a painful procedure to be taller. If someone doesn't like you because your boobs are too small, don't get a procedure for them. Like, oh, not to mention, like, these people that spend so much money on these things really need a touch, like, need to touch grass a tiny bit and, like, go visit other cultures and places because, like, imagine spending $50,000 just to make yourself, like, to, to enhance yourself. Oh, and it's another problem because th these are just being exploited. It's a business for so many people. Influencers and what you hear online and see online is not the fucking standard. Even like even movies, they're catering to things for the sake of making money. There's going to be people in there. There are going to be people in there that are there just because they fit the agenda to increase the value of the movie. Like. Pause, you know my height, the amount of times I've been rejected because of my height is substantial, it's silly. It's a- oh my god. Like, it is so- Those people, like, that reject others on height, like, honestly, they- They're, like, so not worth it. Jesus Christ, man. Yeah, like, you're- you're not even small. Like, I don't know, it, it's insane. You're given the reason to save you from the real reason. <sighs> I don't know what's worse, being told like your height is the reason or people being unable to communicate the real reason. I honestly don't know. Like <laughs> it I agree I agree with the sentiment that chat is having. You dodge the bullet. Like it's, it's <laughs> I I change like I try to change for someone that I thought I loved and that I really wanted them to like love me completely and like you know just I wanted to do anything for them when I was like really young and naive not that I am not <laughs> still but you know and I can tell you the one lesson I learned is don't change for someone because it's not just not worth it it won't make you happy and you'll be miserable in 20 years realizing you put so much effort and time into something thing for someone else not even for yourself seven you might argue these people are just morons however some of the methods used in hollywood are also questionable i was eating so much chicken breast that the hardest part about it was actually chewing it all so i would just put it into a blender blend it all up and just drink chicken in fact to achieve <laughs> i laugh but it's also sad and true Ugh. i if you eat too much chicken man you kind of get sick of just eating chicken but like stuff like this, right? It's like if you're going to make yourself miserable just for the sake of training, like Beaver's physique in Baywatch, Zac Efron was also taking powerful diuretics to dry himself out. When I was done with that movie, I don't ever want to be in that good of shape again. <laughs> really. I don't think it's surprising that many people struggle with disordered eating habits, like Freddie Flintoff, who developed bulimia. I became known as a fat cricketer, really. Bulimic, That's oh. when I started doing it. That's rough. You put your fingers down your throat. As you gag, you bite into your hand so hard. The wrenching to get it out. It's not right, is it? I know it's not right, but I can't say for sure that this is going to stop. If you can look past the airbrush marketing and Hollywood magic, eating it's and exercise to disorders stop among that. celebrities are everywhere. Eating disorders are if horrible. If I get a girlfriend, I gotta have a six pack. And so I thought that if I didn't eat anything, well, I wouldn't get any fat. And then if I worked out a ton, I would get big and muscular. Meanwhile, some of the biggest influencers are using Photoshop, Video Shop, yeah. and other deceptive practices to stand out on social media. 
Here in the Western cultures, there has always been a tradition of muscularity, but in the last several decades, this emphasis on male muscularity seems to have accelerated. No matter where you look, this can be seen. Yet, nobody wants to admit it. So, where could this change be coming from? And what could be driving it? Over time, the Hollywood portrayal of the ideal man seems to be getting more and more muscular. There's also the problem in this because of the fact that a lot of people don't realize that you're also, like, your body frame and your structure in itself will contribute a lot to what you can achieve. And that's something that's not really taught or you're educated about. And a lot of people start being sold on this idea that they can reach a certain image before they learn, after all the investment and hard work, they learn that they can never achieve that. It is weird because, like, a lot of women don't like bodybuilder types. Kaiser. Like, it, it's a thing that's a vicious cycle, as I said, because you have the, the bodybuilders that care about bodybuilding, and then you have the people that simply want to make a quick buck and profit, so they will sell you a dream. And then you have the people that are desperate or need that, that need something that will end up being sucked into this hole. And then you have like social media also feeding into it because obviously it's generating clicks. So you're just being fed a lot of like messages and stories and dreams in a way. You catch more men than women when you become a bodybuilder. Trick, trick. <laughs> oh. It's like social media definitely has affected a lot of society standards because I see it on I see it on my social media. You see a lot of women telling you not to settle, not to accept. You see a lot of people like going to ask for relationship advice and you like you get so many comments just telling you to break up with them, to not settle, to like it's horrible that they should dump them, that it's unacceptable for any small little thing as if people like people weigh in in a relationship as if they have a seat at the table and that's becoming common where you simply like anything happens and you say something and people automatically tell you to break up divorce move uh get someone better that you're settling that it's not good enough and i don't think a lot of users realize that people make a lot of money from social media so they're they are going to do things to make you stay there like the i i don't know it is it is rough seeing these warped ideals and everything. So when I got to Orange is the New Black uh, for that for the first shirtless scene, I definitely did some unhealthy crash dieting. I've been on TV long enough, I'll tell you this is something that almost all actors and actresses do for these shirtless scenes. They often achieve their physiques through aggressive crash dieting at the expense of their physical health to meet Hollywood's demands. It's a couple hours a day yeah. and it was, it was brutal. Uh, the tricky part was eating. The same occurs in Bollywood. So putting on the weight was fun. I could eat and drink whatever I wanted and have a great time. And I had a ball. I have to say I had a ball. But it was also most uncomfortable. Even my wrestling training was affected because I was carrying so much weight that I couldn't really move fast enough. This was the silver era of bodybuilding. This is the gold era. And this is today, with many bodybuilders displaying bubble gut. You're ripped. You're huge. You look fantastic. No stomach, no nothing, no problems. Because people do not come no to stomach. show to see bellies. This is insanity, and if they to man. That, they go to maternity ward or something like that, and they can uh, see plenty of stomachs there. Palumboism is a side effect of heavy steroid usage. I'm not talking about my belly. <laughs> Probably don't need to tell you a similar physical Jesus progression Christ, man. can be seen in reality TV. Seriously? That is not attractive to me. Shot. No offense to anyone, but like this is Jason mm -hmm. Momoa. Aquaman, his physique labeled as a dad bod. Same thing for an off-season bodybuilder, Chris Bumstead. Can you rate this guy's physique for me, Dylan? Tad, can't see him. Oh, Part how is that a dad bod? Like down. Again, I am pretty sure. Like I, I don't even think these women think. 
though like that's a dad bot i'm pretty sure that's a stage fucking tiktok meant to generate clicks views engagement because obviously the first thing you're gonna do on that tiktok is pause and go to the comments and go how the fuck is that a dad bot oh my god they don't know what they're talking about it's meant to make you comment on it it's meant to make you generate rage and to engage into it or share it with someone it's literally bait <laughs> and people fall for this type of stage videos and again it, it's meant for it's meant for money it's meant to to make someone money it's sad because yes it's going to modify standards because a lot of people are going to start believing in this type of thing because they constantly see it it's for young people it's mind fucky oh man i can understand how the video like Perhaps not necessarily the way it's being framed into the video, but I can totally understand how his message and yes, it's been happening for a long time and it's just getting worse with social media, sadly. Like, it will probably get even worse than it is right now. People need to learn to actually educate their kids and focus more on teaching them about all the fakeness that is happening. And it is a circular problem. Yes, it is a circular problem. Like to improving knowledge, resources, and just a natural result of increased competition. But the rise of cosmetic drugs, technology to manipulate- But like, sorry, before we continue the video, because I want to say, I want to get it off my chest, it's like, while a lot of things are fake, the bodybuilders are not. Like, the example that he's giving with the bodybuilders, that is definitely, like, there is a huge change in that scene. And it's curious as to where exactly it ends up, like, why it went so much to that point is it people that are simply having issues with just he said the medical term earlier in the video but i don't re remember it um is it because of the fact that some people simply don't think it's enough and they just push further and further just because they they're never happy with the amount of muscle that they have is that what caused to it natural result of increased competition but the rise of cosmetic drugs technology to manipulate videos and the super competitive social media environment where people only post their highlight reels. Mm -hmm. It can be difficult to separate social media from reality. But others have argued there's a darker side. You see, some people profit immensely off these warped ideals. An invisible hand. Sounds very tinfoil hat. No, it doesn't, it's true. We need to go deeper. To the man who wrote the book on propaganda and shaped the world of marketing as we know it. People. 1920. People that are watching on YouTube are gonna be like, SHUT UP PAUSE! Listen to the video, it's already explaining that! I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry in advance, okay? I'm very chatty on the subject. I... <laughs> I have to deal with social media every day. Women didn't smoke. It was extremely taboo. <laughs> a masculine thing to do. There's a taboo by men that does not Yeah, marketing is horrible, honestly. Either it's gotten public or very aggressive and very predatory. Of course, the tobacco industry wasn't happy missing out on 50% of potential customers. Everything they tried to do to appeal to the female demographic failed. They simply wouldn't buy based on rational reasons presented. The stigma was too much to overcome. When along came the young marketer, Edward Bernays, he had a secret weapon. Uh. Knowledge passed down by his notable uncle, the father of psychoanalysis. Sigmund Freud believed that much of human decision-making was driven by unconscious and irrational impulses, often resulting in excess and overcompensation. Bernays decided to apply his uncle's theories to marketing. He didn't need to appeal to the individual woman and the rational benefits of smoking. He needed to completely reshape the cultural perception of smoking. So he hired a group of women at a big event, told them to all light up cigarettes, with photographers ready to take photos of them. These ladies weren't just lighting cigarettes, but torches of freedom, demonstrating Damn. their ability to assert their independence. He had staged a political protest to invoke the right emotions in the woman. Next morning, there wasn't a newspaper in the United States. Even the New York Times had a front page story. Debutantes light torches of freedom. Torches of freedom. Inhumanity. Uh, to women <sighs> by a taboo against smoking. Jesus it Christ. Bernays would go on to use trick after trick after trick 
in the marketing and political world. He wrote the book on propaganda and set the path of much of the advertising you see today, with companies hiring psychoanalysts to capitalize on this new approach to marketing, a shift from need to desire in a post-war America. Modern man quite often tries to work off his frustrations by spending on self-gratification. <laughs> That's still true to this day. Oh, I mean, it, it's... <laughs> That's exactly right, or like marketing practices do destroy lives and economies, but they are never held responsible. I had someone comment on one of my videos where I blamed mostly mostly platforms for allowing behaviors to exist instead of b blaming the people themselves. And people are like, no, 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 you should blame the people because they're consciously doing it. And I'm like, Okay, but you're not blaming the marketing teams for consciously doing it and putting ideas and selling stuff to kids in Fortnite. That's fine, but you blame a random individual, but not a company, not the marketing, not the product, not the platform. Never the platform, ne never the companies. It's like, it it's insane to me just how much you can get away with just because you are a company. Like, take this take this cigarette example that they just had here with how it was marketed and perceived as, oh, it's a torch of freedom for cigarettes. How you destroy an entire taboo about it. And even now, right? Like, even now you have cigarettes in Hollywood movies being seen as this cool thing that you do. Same with alcohol. You have it in every single movie. There's a celebration, pop out the alcohol. It's the most marketed and accepted thing in existence <laughs> right now. Oh, and yeah, people people will spend on feeling good. It it's even it's even in the in the the quote of like, oh, I I'm gonna splurge because like you know I just had a really good day or like I'm I'm gonna treat myself. <laughs> As they say. Modern man is eternally ready to fill out his self-image by purchasing products which complement it. And what better way to improve one's self-image than through your own body? Vogue magazine invented cellulite, a perfectly normal thing, turned into a condition. Marketers went hard, tapping into the insecurities of women, driving the massive growth of the beauty industry. Buy this to be good enough was an extremely powerful message. Is it wrong? to give people what they want by taking away their defenses. But much like with cigarettes, marketers realize they're missing 50% ah, yes. of their potential customers. Only this time, it was the men. Create the problem to sell the solution. Number one marketing technique. I've seen it enough in video games to be fully aware of, of it on marketing and TV. Much it is pretty comedic, yes. Lung cancer sticks. This is not always in your best interest. And after many iterations, these standards, what Jeez. people want, has become more and more unrealistic. Advertising lives or dies by its commercial success. And insecurity sells. Insecurity, <laughs> why we fall for bullshit. I like the way the video is framed. Like, it, it goes through a lot of the topics that I started going in very early in, <laughs> mostly because we were talking about it. So, yeah. It is over dramatic, yes, but it is well edited. It provides effects for the things that matter. It's, it has bullet points, you know, but it does present a, a real issue. The human brain has evolved over millions of years and isn't built to deal with the rapid rise of the internet. Whether mm -hmm. intentional or not, the display of unrealistic and deceptive ideals in the media exploits our cognitive biases, often to the detriment of both mental and physical health. It's why some of the most mainstream fitness advice is the least effective. I don't know who still needs to hear this, but you do not target fat around your stomach with specific exercises. Eight million views. Oh, let's ask the... Hey, I know that dude. He constantly he constantly talks on TikTok about uh about bad advice that people are giving and constantly has to like explain to people that that's fake and stuff like that. 
He's a good creator. The average person, what they think. Let's stop asking the average person <laughs> what they think. You know how stupid the average person is? Truth seen as comedy, that's gold. Isn't it always? <sighs> Man, that is... <sighs> that's rough. You know, when... He is absolutely right. Uh, uh, no offense to a lot of people, but like... You shouldn't speak if you don't know anything about the topic or if you're not well informed, because... As in, like, you shouldn't speak as if you you do know, right? You shouldn't speak as if you you are in a position of where you can educate others on something, if you have no fucking clue. And sadly, with the internet and social media, a lot of people do that. A lot of people are gurus. That they're they're now like uh, influencers. They can tell you things, and oh. Uh... Because, like, you can have your own opinion and everything, but it reaches, like, I'll, I'll give the one example that stood out to me the most. There was this video of a person saying that uh, there's avocado inside of the avocado seed, right? Like, you know, when you open an avocado, there's the, the ball thingy in it. That person said that you're missing out on avocado and you need to cut that one open, too. Which is like extremely dangerous to do and really hard. And also like too many people believed it. And there were people going at being admitted to the hospital from trying it. And it's like, oh man. And do we hold those people accountable? No, we're gonna go like, well, if you're stupid enough to fall for it. But that's how it kind of like that's how it starts, right? You look at it and you're like, oh well, natural selection. Sure. But you fall for stuff too. There are a lot of you might not fall for that one, but you're gonna fall for something. But hey, you know, like <sighs> let's just applaud and laugh, right? This is known as the Dunning Kruger effect, where people with low experience in an area tend to overestimate their ability or knowledge. Regardless of how smart you are, if you're part of the human species, you're susceptible to your cognitive biases being exploited. Mm -hmm. Is he smart? No, he's a freaking good looking dude, okay? And he's making extremely large amounts of money by saying stupid things that don't make any sense. But you look at him and you're like, holy crap, he looks amazing. I'm going to do what he's doing. This is the halo effect, where people who are considered attractive tend to be rated higher on other positive mm -hmm. traits as well. Yeah. If you were to look at this podcast here. Is this some cheap shit, Joe? Oh, that's the, that's the shit, bro. See that curtain? Down the back. Fats and meats and never eating carbs. But the way that he's tried to mimic the guest position on Joe Rogan, you fucking piece of shit. Social proof is another, where simply a large following can make a person more trustworthy. <laughs> this is so By true, presenting man. presenting a certain body type or standard as the norm, marketers create a reference point that influences our perceptions of what is desirable. The anchoring effect. This, and an array of other blind spots, is what the media taps into. Often those people on social media, in magazines and on the big screen, are just cogs in the machine. Mm -hmm. At the start, this was more blatant and easier to identify. Today, it's all around us, often with no escape. Don't get me wrong, I'm down for super effective marketing that helps people live healthier lives. But no other industry has such a high failure rate while being so profitable. I can't help but think back the many people getting life-altering surgeries, developing eating disorders, and a lot of the negative side effects we haven't even discussed yet. Mean like, a lot of people are very, very jaded to it, and a lot of people don't care anymore. Like they look at it and they're they're just there's no reaction. Like people had the warning of sensitive topic, but sensitive topic again, people hear a school shooting in the US and the reaction that you get is, well, it happens there every day and that's it. <laughs> that That's the entire reaction. There's like, moving on. Just another normal day. 
Like, Meanwhile, obesity and suicide rates are on the rise in America. And a recent poll found uh, that one in eight UK adults have suicidal thoughts related to body image. There's a very clear disconnect. In fact, a Harvard psychiatrist warned about this over 20 years ago. I don't think even he realized just how serious and widespread this would become. Complex. Yes, I've done steroids. But here's the catch. When beauty is so subjective, the ideals so extreme, the effects are fatal. Today's children are growing up with the internet as a constant presence in their lives, with little knowledge of a world without it. Yeah, like you're constantly bombarded by information. Like you have so much information being thrown at you. It's very hard to really absorb, process and filter for all of it. So a lot of the times, a lot of things are just going to just bounce off of you and you're not going to really react to it because you're just like, I, you also don't know whether it's true or not anymore. You don't know what anything is necessarily true or false anymore when you look at it. Yeah, there's like way too much information being passed around. Like you filter, you filter it out and it's just, it's rough. And the harmful effects of unrealistic body standards are evident through the growing list of casualties. I'm a 14 year old and I'm thinking about taking 50 milligrams of DECA per week for four weeks. I know about the side effects on adults, but not in teens. Is there any side because effects of I should steroid. know? I'm a 16 year old boy, currently undergoing cosmetic limb lengthening surgery. I don't think I know what's best for me yet, but I absolutely cannot see myself regressing this decision. Sometimes unorthodox and drastic solutions are the best ones. I'm 15 years old and recently found out about SARMs. My goal is to gain more muscle and get leaner. I'm 5 foot 11 and 145 pounds currently. Why do people at that age even care, man? That is like... Uh... I don't know who needs to hear this, but if you're 15, just just, just live your fucking life, man. <laughs> Start taking shit. Oh, no, no amount of pussy is worth it. My main concern is whether or not I should take ligandrol, considering my age. These For are just a few Emperor. people on public forums about to make life altering decisions with many going through with it. So yeah, I decided to start, start trying. Whoa, dude. What did you just say? We're witnessing extremely young kids take puberty altering performance enhancing drugs with parents suspected to be giving it to their children as young as six for a chance to make it in Hollywood. There's not many Why? drug use or abuse issues where you get complimented so much. Oh my much. god. And even people trying to do things more naturally are suffering. I know I look like complete rubbish, right? When you train every single day for like two hours, do a load of steps, get like four hours sleep, you have. Trade for 12 hours? I mean, I I don't even know where to start with that. Like, I might sound insensitive, but that's fucking horrible parenting, man. I understand also the fact that it's very hard because, like, in a lot of schools, there's, like, peer pressure. And if you don't fit standards, you're going to feel bad. So it's a vicious cycle if, like, you deny your kid certain things that other people have. Right? So <laughs> if you deny them, then they get bullied at school and they get fucked up. If you don't deny them, they get fucked up. No matter what, it's like what you're going to end up having to decide when exactly you want your kid to to need help, either medical or mental or oh, sorry, physical or mental or both. Like, it's such a vicious cycle. Because if you don't let your kid join in on what every other kid is doing because their parents are just blind, apparently, then that kid will feel like an outsider. But at least they'll be healthy. But yeah, like, oh man. I honestly think this is bad parenting. I, I don't know what else to say for kids taking steroids. It's fucked up. It is really fucked up. Do you know what the dumbest thing I was told is school on both sides, tell the teachers and fight back? Yeah, honestly. I've, I've, I've read some comments on, on YouTube from people commenting on my videos as well. Like, it, it's such a problem that you, the solutions are just, well, deal with it, figure it out on your own. 
or tough. Yeah, toughen up. Like a lot of teachers are very much not teaching anymore. They're just there mediating if they can. They're like, well, patch it up, patch the problem up, uh, and not in my presence do whatever. And they turn a blind eye to things. And it feeds into this entire problem. Like you have education being fucked up. You have teachers not really doing anything. You have parents, some parents, not looking at what their kids are doing or not being well informed with what's happening like my teachers were most of them i had one person that was like a really horrible teacher but like outside of that my teachers actually cared about things and they did stuff they would not like tell us to you know just just shake hands and that's it no team to support you and everything is being done just by you it takes its toll in life, there is this feeling that we all live with inadequacy. There is this call to achieve and to go beyond all expectations, to outperform other people, to measure oneself against a panoply of influencers and gurus. Yeah, co competitiveness taken to uh, the extreme, or rather competitiveness being marketed. That That's... That's what society demands in a way, yeah. Honestly. You have to give your life and your soul for certain things. And then people are wondering why others are fed up and they don't want to do that. Yeah, like, it, it is... Honestly, it is such a vicious cycle that we have. Because, like, teachers don't do anything, so people say teachers are horrible. And then teachers are like, well, people don't listen to me anyway. So it's a problem that we created that we don't really have a solution for anymore. Because even the people that do try and are good are being punished for actually trying or actively doing stuff. Same with people that are protecting themselves, right? Like you're getting bullied and you fight back. You're the bad person because you fought back. Oh. But yeah. Jesus Christ, man. To work ridiculously long hours. Scott's was one of the more wholesome fitness YouTubers, doing much of the things we see Hollywood boast about. Yet, it seems to have contributed to his early death. But I've set it up, you're gonna think I'm gonna roll up. Ah, oh, shit. I remember seeing a 19-year-old die of a heart attack in the local paper. Four different steroids were found in his system, with a suspected enlarged heart a contributing factor. Similarly to bodybuilder Dallas McCarver, who collapsed on stage, recovered, and sadly passed away with a heart almost three times the size it should have been. A lot of people are speculating how much testosterone Jesus is this guy injecting to get a 55,000 nanogram per deciliter total T. There's tributes on YouTube for all of the bodybuilders who pass away. Each year, their age is getting lower. Someone is literally going to have to die on stage before something changes in bodybuilding. Maybe these are extreme cases, but if you actually listen to what the very celebrities many look up to are saying, a very different side gets presented. It's hard to look like, even if you do work out, to be like, that to be kind that of in shape is, is not, it's not natural. The way that People aren't gonna say anything if someone dies on stage. They're just gonna say it was a, a freak accident and move on. And as long as it's as long as people are selling you the, the things that you need and are making a profit, they're going to keep pushing for it and marketing it. And the news of someone actually dying on stage is most likely not even going to make the mainstream media in a lot of cases, especially if they're uh, nobody. Because, again, we learned early, even earlier in the video, there was the example of if you, are, uh, if you have more followers, your opinion matters more they achieve their rapid transformations is often highly unsustainable. For guys, that's unrealistic, I'm telling you. Zac Efron actually went through a phase of depression and insomnia after his brutal drug-assisted Crash Baywatch regimen. Channing Tatum, Luke Jackson, Ed Sheeran, Tyson Fury developed eating disorders and are warned about their unsustainable practices. I started noticing it for the first time when I just started rebelling against a gym. And these people have the top coaches and doctors at their side. These people also have the help that they need to recover and to realize it. That's also something that a lot of people fail to realize when they get into the shit and when they end up falling for it or giving into it, right? Or... <laughs> 
you're not going to have the, the same access to things because you're probably not going to have the money to put into it, too. Truly, I don't know how people that work a nine to five it's actually horrible, stay in man. shape because it's my full time job and I can barely do it. When studies are suggesting the majority of men are now displaying signs of body dysmorphic disorder, it's an issue that's hard to ignore. But because of a stigma, speaking about this, seeking help, or even thinking about it is seen as weak, with many willing to end their lives or pin themselves because help isn't as much of. And even those who look the best aren't immune to this because everything is subjective. I look like a normal, reasonable human being with like an acceptable amount of like muscle tone, right? But still in my head, there was like this crazy, just distortion, mm -hmm. body dysmorphia. This doesn't mean you shouldn't find people in great shape motivating, just that even your favorite idols get older and struggle with these things. Yet, it doesn't get much coverage because it's not as glamorous. Resistance Obviously. And having high there's, there's not going to be much in terms of coverage because it's not profitable. It, it reflects on the problem created to sell you the solution. And you bring up concerns and problems and people are just going to call you weak. They're going to say that you just weren't good enough. You weren't meant for it, that you're the failure, that it's on you, that you simply didn't do enough. And they're not going to accept it. <laughs> he said it at the start of the video with a lot of the things that I mentioned as well. Like, oh, it sounds like tinfoil hat, right? It's like, no, it's someone that is in this environment and sees it. It's very true. However, to a lot of people, they're not going to believe it. A lot of people say, nah, that's not true, Paz. To a lot of the things that I bring up when it comes to what others do. In my case, it's for content creation, right? Because a lot of people invest very heavily in becoming a content creator and they think they need a lot of things because that's how it's marketed like to be a streamer you need a webcam you need a good microphone you need a, if you're a vtuber you need a great avatar you need to spend a fuck ton of money you need overlays you need alerts you need emotes no one's gonna watch you if you don't have a I don't know, $5,000 worth of shit before you even get started and it's being sold as like you get sold packages and stuff like that. And people would much rather believe that they need something that will assist them than listen to the fact that you don't need it and you can you can be yourself. You don't need a microphone and you don't need a, a webcam carousel. I know streamers that have made it simply typing in their chat. They got partnered without having a webcam, not having a microphone and just replying to people by typing in the chat while playing the game because they created good content on YouTube and good content on forums. Like you really do not need even a microphone or a webcam. And then we have like um Zentrea who as far as I know doesn't have a webcam, a web not a webcam, got a microphone. Uses text to speech. Like technically you don't even need your voice for it. Like, people don't need to hear your voice. So, th there are a lot of people out there that can make it. Like, I know mute people that do not need microphones. But yeah, like, it, it is... It's rough. My goal. It's really Isn't rough, inherently honestly. pathological? I have respect for anyone who achieves an impressive body transmission, especially if done honestly. However, unrealistic body standards can have deadly consequences regardless of where you think this stems from. Mm. Many point to Hollywood actors, supplement companies, dolls and clothing companies. I get why some people want to see the fitness industry burn to the ground. But pitchforking individuals and stealing kids' Power Rangers probably isn't the answer. It's just a doll. No, it's, it's educating people to doll. know Nor is polarizing better. people with men or women have it worse arguments. There is no them in us. The market decides what sticks, so mass awareness is a big part of the solution. Mm -hmm. You vote with your money and attention. This isn't necessarily better than this, nor is this than this, and definitely not this or this. It's up to you to discover what you really want, and not have others decide this for you. Dr. Pope suggests the following as potential outlets if you get caught up. Personally, I still go to the gym. While I'll never look crazy, it's been very satisfying to get closer to a goal that I had as a kid. Especially considering, I don't think it's an unhealthy obsession anymore. Ironically, with progress being the best, once I chilled out and focused on other things. I realized the hard way that looking good means nothing if you don't feel good. If you ever try to get in shape, Very please true. understand this. It's all I'm trying to get across to the video. I don't often ask, but sharing this video wherever you can would really help a lot. 
Self-improvement is supposed to enhance yourself as a person, not replace yourself. So the perfect male physique, based on the evidence, it never existed. Mm -hmm. It's what you believe it is. I just hope trying to get there for you isn't as deadly as it's been for so many people. Honestly, it was a very well made video and very tough subject to like breach and break into things. Um, the editing definitely made it more light or more digestible for people as well, which for me is a bonus point. I know some of you feel like it took away from the gravity of the situation, but I honestly think that like his point is a good one when it comes to simply do things for yourself. And if you don't feel good about something, that means it's not necessarily for you. It's not about pushing through because you're weak and you need to push through. That's a thing that gets abused and it's just toxic and it's a toxic belief that people keep pushing onto others. It's like if you're gonna starve yourself or you're gonna like, you feel like you're gonna vomit from having the same thing over and over, get some diverse dieting like change your diet don't force yourself because that's how it should be and that's what oh, that's the only thing you should eat you should only eat chicken but yeah people in general they tend to look outward a lot of the time when they should look inward and i feel like that's the problem that we have as a society right now we are too focused on other people and other people's wants and needs and what they think is the best including like marketing right you don't need the fanciest the fanciest things you don't need the best diet you don't need crazy equipment. You don't need a lot of things. And sadly, people fall for marketing because that's why it's marketing and that's why they get paid so much. Psychology, playing with things that you were weak to. And being weak isn't necessarily a bad thing. Again, it's being spewed in a way that makes it sound bad. Oh no, you are weak. Yes, we each individually are weak. However, that, that's why we banded together. <laughs> To not be as weak, you know? Man, I can't believe that there are people that would subject themselves through height enhancements. That, that still stuck with me. That was fucked up. Absolutely fucked up. Yeah, like people fall for marketing because marketing is research to manipulate people. And I know, like, I said it before in the video, and I'll say it again. The fact that you didn't fall for a marketing technique doesn't mean that the people that did deserve it. And it doesn't mean that it's okay. And it doesn't mean that you should turn a blind eye. Because you probably fell for a tactic too. You might have just not realized it. And while one tactic doesn't work on you, another will. And that's the thing that I hear the most when it comes to anything. Oh, well... I'm not going to buy it, so why should I care that they're abusing FOMO? Because a lot of other people are buying it and falling for it. It's just a matter of time before they get a tactic that's going to work against you.